church say amen again. Amen. We are glad to be in God's house. Is that all right? And I don't know what you came for, but I know what I came for. I came because I am thankful and appreciative to God for all of his goodness toward me. We were away from you last week, and I really want to thank God for Brother, Brother Willie Smith and, and the great job he's continuing to do. Um, and we missed you, as we always do. You know, it's sometimes you need uh, some refreshment, some refreshing, but I just love y'all, and I appreciate you. And you sometimes have to go other places uh, to see how good you got it. You know, and I just really uh, am thankful to God for the privilege and honor that I have uh, to serve with you. And we all should be thankful for the privilege that we all have to serve the one and true living God. Is that all right? Uh, pray with me, please. Gracious Father, we thank you so much. Words cannot uh, begin to express uh, how we feel about you. Uh, for being mindful to us, both as a collection, collective body of Christ in this congregation, but also uh, mindful of us individually. Uh, we're just so appreciative, Heavenly Father, of your love to us. We thank you, Heavenly Father, and many times we fail to realize that of all of our extended family, of all of our friends, and all of those acquaintances that we have, Heavenly Father, you have allowed us to come to a knowledge of your truth. And for that, we're so thankful. We're thankful to be able to be here in this place of gathering to worship you in spirit and in truth as you have instructed for you seek those, Heavenly Father, true worshipers, to worship you as you've called for. Bless us now, Heavenly Father, that now that we have come, that we may be receptive to your word to us. No matter what's going on in our lives, help, help us not to give up on you. Help us not to turn back to the beggarly elements of this world. But help us, Heavenly Father, to continue to walk by faith and not by sight. Be with us now as we look into your holy, inspired word. And Father, we pray for anyone under the sound of my voice who has not yet to put Christ on in baptism. We pray that something be said that would prick their hearts to ask, what is it that I might do to be saved? We thank you, Lord, and we ask this prayer in faith and give thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. John chapter 6 and verse 60. And I want you to know, I don't care how many times you go through this scripture text here, you can never get enough. Amen. Amen. You see, I'm, the, I'm of the sort that I, I just can't get enough of God's word. I don't know about you. I can be full and I can still be hungry for God's word. In John chapter 6 and verse 60, Jesus had just finished teaching in the synagogue and he taught in Capernaum, which was his uh, town in which he lived. We know that he was born in Bethlehem, raised in Nazareth, but he lived in Capernaum as an adult and he was teaching there. And in verse 60, if you have it, say amen. amen. The Bible says, many therefore of his disciples. Is that in your Bible? Amen. Now, a disciple means, let me just break this down. A disciple means it comes from the word which actual meaning is a learner. So many of his learners. And because it actual, actually means learner, uh, it is applied to the followers of Christ because they were taught by him. So when we see uh, that many, therefore, of his disciples uh, 
when they heard this, many of his learners, when they heard this, said, this is a hard saying. Who can hear it? Is that all right? This is a hard saying. Who can hear it? Now, we have to ask ourselves, and we have to go to the text to see, what is it that Jesus said that his learners got to a point where they said, this is a hard saying. Who can hear it? Go back with me to verse 48, the same chapter. The Bible says, Jesus speaking, he says, I am that bread of life. And this is emphatic. I, I am that bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. Is that all right? I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Notice then, verse 52, the Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? You see, Jesus is always speaking spiritually. But when you have a carnal mind and your understanding is carnal, you won't understand what he's saying to you. He said, verily, verily, I say unto you, except ye eat, my, eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. Is that all right? Is Jesus telling the truth? Yes, he is. And I remember Paul in Galatians Chapter 4 and verse 16 saying, am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? You see, everyone seemingly wants to be told the truth, but sometimes when the truth is told to you, sometimes you just can't handle it. You see, this is what Jesus was teaching in this specific teaching, this specific doctrine uh, that he's teaching many Therefore, if his disciples, when they heard this, said, this is a hard saying, who can hear it? Now, understand this, what hard saying means. Hard saying means that it was said that it's offensive and disagreeable. Who can hear it meant that they were not able to patiently stay and listen to such a teaching or even believe it. This is a hard saying. Who can hear it? But I noticed something right here. The learners have a problem with the teacher. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. The learners have an issue, a problem with the teacher. Now understand that as a teacher, I stand to be corrected. But not Jesus. Is that all right? He's the master teacher. But one thing I, I see that's missing that even though they said it was a hard saying and who can receive it, not only can I receive it, but who can receive it? You see, when people have an issue with you, they want everybody else to have an issue with you. Y'all ain't getting that. You'll get it on the way home. We can't hear it. We're, we're so intelligible. We can't hear it and neither can anyone else. But if you're so intelligent, why didn't you just ask like his apostles asked him, declare unto us what you're saying. Give us some understanding. We're not getting this. Give us some understanding. You see, some of the worst things we can do is have a problem with what Jesus said and not ask for help. Verse 61 says, when Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, you see, 
even when we think something, our thoughts are as words to God. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Now, don't only be careful about what you say. Be careful about what you're thinking. Is that all right? When he murmured at it, when the disciples murmured at it, he said to them, does this offend you? Does this thing offend you? In Church of Christ, let's just be real with it. Let's not put the finger on, on these disciples who have a problem because sometimes we have a problem too. You say, I ain't got a problem with the word of God. I believe everything in the word of God. Well, don't tell me what you're saying. Show me what you're doing. You see, we're different. When we have a problem with God's word, we just don't do it. God says to forgive and I ain't forgive. You just don't do it. You see, they ain't the only ones who had a problem with some of the doctrines of Jesus. You see, some of his teachings are hard saying to us, too. Some of his teachings on hell and eternal damnation, some of us ain't feeling that. But Jesus talked about hell more than he did about heaven. His teachings about the new birth and the one way of salvation, some of us ha ain't feeling that. But it's true anyhow. His teachings about forbidding divorce, some of us have an issue with that. It got quiet, didn't it? But it's still in the, in the Bible. Except for the cause of fornication. Is that what your Bible says? Say amen if you can. Is that all right? His teachings on loving your enemies and blessing them that curse you and doing good to them that hate you and praying for them that despitefully use and persecute you. I know some of us ain't feeling that. Amen. His teachings on forgiving those who sin against you. And turning the other cheek and not avenging yourself. Some of us is not feeling that. But you see, glory be to God that thousands have heard these doctrines of Christ and have found them not only easy, but pleasant. The Bible says in Psalm 119 and the verse 103, how sweet are thy words unto my taste, yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Y'all will get that later. You see, we like to have our boyfriends and girlfriends speak sweet nothings to us. But I love listening to Jesus. Is that all right? You see, for the children of faith, the teachings of Christ are to be received with meekness. Is that all right? He says, lay aside all the things in our ears and receive with meekness the word of God, which is what? Able to save your souls. Is that all right? You see, we need to be receiving his word and accepting, hear what I'm saying, accepting his word, whether or not we fully understand it or not. I don't fully understand how God took dust and made a man out of it, but I accept it. I don't under fully understand how he said, let there be light and there was light. I don't fully understand that, but I accept it. Thank you for the light. I don't fully understand all that, but I accept it. Sometimes we have a mindset in the church that I'm not going to believe it until I understand it fully. Well, you have a problem. Because it'll take you your life and all of our other lives to get all of this. Is that all right? Jesus said in Matthew 28, 20, teaching them to observe some things. Just what you want to. Teaching them to observe means teaching them to obey all things whatsoever I commanded you. And lo, I am with you all the way 
to the end of the world. Amen. Amen. You see, Jesus understood that they had an issue to what he said, but what he said was never to be taken literally in the first place. That's why he says in verse 62, he, he lets them know at the end of 61, does this offend you? Man, I ain't even got to the, the tough stuff yet. So this little thing offends you? Now he's going to try and help him out. He says in verse 62, what and if ye shall see the son of man ascend up where he was before? He's giving them, in other words, he's giving them a hint of his ascension back. So that they can really grasp and, and understand, listen, I'm going back to where I was before. This ought to help you and, and, and encourage you in some way to understand that what I'm saying is for real. What I'm saying is true, whether you understand it fully or not. Is that all right? He says in verse 63, now watch this. He says, it is the spirit that quickeneth or makes alive. Are we getting that? He's saying, listen, any words, any advice, any instruction, but he's also talking about their mindset also. Anything without the spirit working with it. All right. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? When the spirit is working with something, it makes it alive. Are y'all feeling me? I'm trying to break it down to you as best I can. He's saying it is the spirit that makes alive. In other words, if we have some food of which Jesus is saying, I am the bread of life. If we have some food and the spirit is working with it, amen, it'll make you alive. Amen. Food is good to a, a man who is alive. But if the spirit ain't with the food, then it's like feeding a dead man. Feeding a dead man. Can you imagine that? Feeding a dead man. Ain't no swallowing going to be going on. Ain't no tr nutrition going to be going on. Are y'all hearing this? He says, the flesh profits nothing. If I were asking you to eat my literal flesh, that wouldn't profit you anything. You understanding this from a, a fleshly carnal mind, trying to understand it that way, it's not going to profit you. All right? He says, the flesh profit nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Amen. The words that I'm speaking. You see, we have to understand, amen, that guess what? We have a soul. You don't know you got a soul? I'll talk to the people over here. We got a soul that needs to be saved. Is that all right? You say, well, what is the soul? I don't see it. Well, just ask yourself this. And I'll use this a lot of times, and I hope I don't offend anyone. But when we see a body up here, where is that person really? What happened to the part of them that made them alive? Because that part never dies. We sing a song where the soul of men never dies. Understand that your soul is going to live somewhere. Somewhere. And how you live on this side is going to determine. Their spirit in their life. But what's the real problem? That they really didn't receive. His word. 64 he says. But there are some of you. Amen, church. But there are some of you that believe not. Wait a minute. He's talking to disciples. He's talking to followers of which we are. And if God would say the same thing today, there's some of us right now who don't believe him. For Jesus knew from the beginning. You see, this reinforces the fact that Jesus was deity. 
He still, by the power of the Holy Spirit, had omniscience to know. And I don't know about you, but I wouldn't want that in this life. Y'all ain't catching that. I wouldn't want to be omniscient in this life because then I would know who really likes me and who really doesn't. Imagine walking with people and you know their intentions. But yet you're the one that created them, so you're still going to love them to the end. Jesus said in Matthew 4.4, 4, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Is that all right? You see, Jesus is telling them, listen, he knew who didn't believe and who also should betray him. Verse 65 said, and he said, therefore said I unto you that no man can come to me except it were given unto him of my father. Jesus is reiterating what he said earlier in verse 44, where he said, no man can come to me except the father draw him. The father which sent me draw him and I will raise him up at the last day. It is written in the prophets and they Shall all shall be all taught of God. Every man therefore that hath heard and learned of the Father cometh unto me. So what is that saying? We all need to examine. Did I come to follow Christ because of the word? Or because of something else. What did I come for? Because this is what mama was? Because I wanted to please mama or daddy and, and let them know I got baptized, I obeyed the gospel, I'm in the church. If you didn't come because you were drawn by the word, you won't stay long. The word has to fall on good soil. Is that all right? Are we getting this? He's letting them know this. And I know I can just imagine what it is is going through their minds when he's saying this. You know what it's like when someone is just telling you the truth and you know it's true and ain't nothing you can say about it. I'll say amen for you. You see, we have to understand this. The Bible says in Hebrews eleven six, but without faith, yes, without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You see, some of these disciples were following him because they were intelligent. And sometimes people who are intelligent wants to be in the spotlight. I'm going to roll with Jesus. He got a big crowd. And I'm here to tell you, brethren, if you're following Jesus to get notice for yourself, God will find you out. I'm, I'm begging you to stop now. Because Proverbs says that you will be exposed in front of the whole congregation. We're here to please him. And guess what? When we stepped at the door of Brother Floyd, he told us what he wanted us to be. We just obeyed. Is that all right? So if I desire to be a song leader, guess what? I can't sing, y'all. Well, you're not going to be a song leader. You're going to be a teacher. Well, I want to be a song leader. I've set all the members in the body as it pleased me. I want to be a song leader. So now I'm mad at Brother Allen because I can't be a song leader. You see how it goes? Amen, sisters. I love my sisters here. Let me just say, I love y'all. Y'all are challenging. 
but y'all love God enough to know what he had in your in his responsibility for you. You know that. Thank God for that. So I don't mind when when we got to tussle or whatever, because I know you love God more than me. I just had to say that. I'm sorry. I, I just shh, keep it a secret. Some of my brothers always oh, I got to deal with all these sisters. I say I love my sisters. I don't know what you all talking about. Man, y'all struggling over there with y'all sisters? No, not over here. We good. That all right? Love my sisters. I'm going to tell you the truth. It was the, the older sisters who really encouraged me to see what was in me because I couldn't see it. Hadn't been for Sister Morell and Sister Tony and Sister Bowen and people like that. I can say all of y'all. I would still be back in that back row. You best believe it. We, ask, we have to ask ourselves, what are we seeking? What are we seeking? Because if you're seeking the wrong things, then you don't really understand what it means to truly follow Christ. When I'm seeking the wrong things, I step into church and I got this idea that everything's supposed to be cool. No more temptations. No more troubles. Who told you that? God has never said in his word that we won't face some tribulation in our life. As a matter of fact, he said, if you will live godly, you shall suffer persecution. So them people on your job that ain't listening to you getting on your nerve, hey man, persecution. But don't quit. He says, verse 66, from that time, from that time, the time when he started to speak this doctrine. You see, Jesus is not going to change for you and me. And I'm encouraging my preaching brethren, don't change the word to please people. Is that all right? People don't like you because of what you're teaching, so be it. You're trying to please God, not people. And as much as I love you, I'm still going to tell you the truth. Because I don't want to see you in line on judgment day. You say, man, you didn't tell me that. Amen, LaCroix. He says, they went back and walked with him no more. But as my brother said last week, don't focus on who left. Focus on who stayed. You have to have the faith enough that no matter who leaves, well, they've been in the church for 30 years. I don't care if they leave, you stay with God. Because where else can you go? Well, those, those men in the church, they ain't right. You stay with God. Amen. Now, I mean, you got to stay there. Amen. But you stay with God. Amen. I don't care if this congregation just goes wayward. You go find another church of Christ that's worshiping God in spirit and in the truth. Amen. They walk with him no more. And we have to remember what Jesus said when John 8, 31 and 32, he said unto the Jews who believed on him, if you continue in my word, then, then, then ye are my disciples, truly. If you continue in my word, then ye are my disciples, truly. And you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. Now, if we've read this a million times, haven't we? But I never understood that the no 
when he said you should know the truth is an experiential knowing of Jesus who is the truth and he makes me free. Many of us know of Jesus but do we truly know Jesus? You say well what do you mean do we truly know Jesus? You see the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 10, 38 and 39, now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my show, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them that draw back into perdition, which means destruction, waste or loss. But of them that believe to the saving of the soul. You see. I'm going to close with this. When we come to Jesus, we really don't understand what it truly means to follow him. Y'all hear what I'm saying? We really don't understand what it means to follow him. But we have to have the type of faith that even in the midst of whatever's going on in our life, to continue to trust him. Don't go back. Continue to trust him. Continue to follow him. Because he'll get us through. Why do you think you were called in the first place? Turn with me to 1 Peter chapter 2. Some of us say and some of us have heard people say, well, I know God called me because he's got a great purpose for me. I don't know what my purpose is. What's my purpose? I'm about to show you right now what your purpose is. You ready? I'm going to show you why you and I were called. Are you ready? Are you ready? The rest of y'all will talk to you later. First Peter chapter 2 starting with verse 18 if you have it say amen. amen the word of God says servants be subject to your masters with all fear not only to the good and gentle but also to the froward Christians, I don't care how mean your boss is. Amen. Whatever you, whatever your career is, you do it as you're doing it to the Lord. Because they need so they need their soul saved too. Is that all right? Watch well, why he says this, verse 19. For this is thankworthy if a man for conscience toward God endure grief, suffering wrongly. For what glory is it if when ye be buffeted for your faults, ye shall take it patiently? In other words, when we mess up and we're, 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 we're buffeted for that, and we have the nerve to say, well, you know, I, I took my punishment. You're supposed to. You deserve it. There's no glory in taking your buffeting patiently when you're wrong. But what about when you're suffering and being buffeted for doing right? What about that? Watch what he says. But if when you do well and suffer for it, ye take it patiently, this is acceptable with God. The question then is, do you want to please God? Or are you too caught up in yourself and your own feelings? That you just want to avenge yourself. Let's keep reading. For even hereunto were ye called. Is that what your Bible says? In other words, this is the reason you were called. Because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example 
that ye should follow in his steps. Now, what kind of steps did Jesus have? Who did no sin. Can we identify with that? No. Amen. We can't. Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth, who when he was reviled, reviled not again. In other words, when they were dogging him, when they were mocking him, he didn't get back at them. He took it patiently. He was focused on the joy that was set before him. What was that joy, y'all? Redeeming us and reconciling us back to his father. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judges righteously. Sometimes when we're going through something with somebody, you just have to commit yourself to the Lord. Lord, take control of me so that I can be still and let you handle this. And guess what that might include? Being quiet. Is that all right? Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on a tree. That we, being dead to sin, should live unto righteousness. By whose stripes ye were healed. For ye were as sheep going astray but now but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls so the next time you want to avenge yourself next time you're going through something and you think it's so unfair remember what Jesus had to go through for you For you. That's what it means to follow Jesus. To walk in his steps. Then when we go to Luke 9.23. He says. And he said to them all. If any man. Will come after me. Do you really want to follow Jesus? If any man will come after me, let him deny, which means to denounce himself. Watch this. And take up his cross daily and follow me. You see, we all love the fact that the cross is central to Christianity, right? And we all focus on the cross where Jesus had to hang. But Jesus is telling us, guess what? I didn't do it to cross, but you got a cross too. Just like it was shameful and disgraceful for me, just like it was trying and tough for me, you got your own cross to bear too. You got a cross. Is that all right? We have to be self-denied. Amen. The Bible says, Romans 3, 23 through 25, for all have sinned. That includes you too. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, which God hath set forth, foreordained to be a propitiation, which means a covering, an atoning sacrifice through faith in his blood. So watch this. You say my cross is heavy. Your wife may be on your cross. Your husband may be on your cross. Certainly your children may be on your cross. Brothers and sisters in Christ are definitely on your cross. 
things may be on your cross. And it may be, seems too hard to carry. Is that all right? Jesus, while carrying his cross, and there was two beams he was carrying, it got to a point where all of his blood must have almost been gone. He was to the point of exhaustion, and he needed some help carrying up his cross. But he still, even to the point of exhaustion, he still got on that cross for you. And even on that cross, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And sometimes we don't know what we're doing. Is that all right? But he paid the price for us. He paid the price for you. No longer think of Christ and the cross in respect to the world. You got to take it personally. He died for you. And you got the audacity to do what you want to do. To not believe him at his word. To have a problem with his word. After what he did for you. He looked. At the twelve. And notice. When they left him. His disciples. Jesus had no concern with them at all. You say why didn't he have concern. Why didn't he go and help them. You know, try to understand it because you have to understand they wasn't his in the first place. So that lets me know when sometimes people leave, you know what? I don't need to worry about that. Because sometimes they were never his to begin with. Is that all right? But he said, will you leave? And thank God for Peter. Peter said, to whom shall we go? Amen. Notice he said, doctrinally speaking, because it's talking about doctrine. Even though he's talking to, about doctrine, he said, to whom? So even with teaching, people are really not drawn to the teaching, they're drawn to a person. Well, well, well. And the person we, the Church of Christ, have to be drawn to is not me, Willie, or, or, or you, Con, it's Christ. It's Christ. Peter said, where are we going to go? Is that all right? Go ahead, Peter. To whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. And we believe and are sure that thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Go ahead, Peter. But in all of his excitement, Jesus still had to correct him. Watch what Jesus said. And you have to pay attention to what Peter said. He said, we believe and are sure. We. Jesus answered them, have not I chosen you twelve and one of you is a devil? In other words, Peter, it's good to be excited that everyone believes. But speak for yourself. Speed, Peter, speak for yourself. And while I want to believe that all y'all believe in Jesus, I can only speak for myself. I hope that you believe and are sure. But if I got to lay my life down for it, I'm going to speak for myself. Is that all right? I haven't been in the church for a while, and I've seen people who I thought were beyond. I thought they were strong in the faith. And now they're over in the Baptist church somewhere. Nevertheless, the foundation of God stands sure. The Lord knows 
knows them that are His. You want to be His today. Is that alright? What it means to truly follow Jesus. Y'all ready to take up your cross? Don't put it down. Don't be looking at mine saying, oh, I want his little cross. God gave you the cross that you can bear. And it's going to help you to be more like him. So don't run away from your cross. Jesus embraced his cross. And I'm not going nowhere. I'm staying. And I'm going to embrace my cross. Is that all right? Because I know it's not going to be the way it is now for eternity. Any day now, the trumpet will sound. Is that all right? The trumpet shall sound. And it won't be no time to repent. So you need to make your repentance now. If you've not obeyed the gospel, you can come having heard the word. Do you believe it? If you believe it, are you willing to repent? Turn away from your sins. Confess that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. That God raised him from the dead on the third day after he was buried. And be buried in baptism. For the remission of your sins. You see, the world believes that you can receive Christ just when you accept him. But the Bible says until your baptism is complete, your sins are still on you. Is that all right? I'd rather believe the Bible than man. For those of us who have obeyed the gospel and maybe, just maybe, we've not followed Christ as we know he requires us to we need to repent we need to ask God to help us to follow him where he leads me I will follow consider where you are